Hello, everybody. Happy Friday, TGIF. It's time for this week's Facebook Friday. And we've got one more round of Halloween projects. I think this will be it for Halloween Facebook Fridays. After today, we're moving on to other things. So if you still need some Halloween ideas, hopefully today you will find them. Uh, I'm going to be making a box that was a special request actually from several people. Um, and then the other two are just kind of fun. Um, all right, I see you guys jumping on. Let's see if I am in the right place. Let me grab my iPad. It has been a crazy week around here. Um, we have, my parents are here, they've moved to town. However, their house was, they were supposed to close today and the closing got pushed to Monday. So now we're just all kind of twiddling our thumbs waiting <laughs> for that. Um, and they're kind of in limbo. So we've been kind of crazy around here. Um, but we did do some shopping. Mom got some things off, knocked off her list today and uh, hopefully we'll get the rest of it this weekend. Hi guys. Hi Gina. Hi Sarah. Thanks for joining me today. So glad that you joined me. I'm going to kind of jump into things quickly because um, two of these projects uh, take a little bit of time longer than normal. So I want to uh, definitely get them done. All right, I see all of you guys on here. All right, let's do prizes first. Remember, you can win a prize just by sharing on Facebook. And last week's winners are Karen Bull and Lacey Gatlin. Gatlin, hi, Henry. Um, so ladies, please send me your e uh, mailing address and I will send you your purple posy um, little gift sets, okay? Congratulations to you two. Uh, this week I've got, let's see, these are host sets, right? Yeah, Believe You Can host sets with some blends, some Stampin' Blends. This is a really good set for Stampin' Blends. Um, so if you would like to win a believe you can stamp set little bundle make sure you share and next week i will choose two winners at random and i will send them to you hey everybody it's good to see you okay so um reminder about the all-star tutorial bundle remember this is free with a 50 dollars purchase and who <laughs> just asked me about the air fryer let me see i saw that go by Ni nina yes i have tried my air fryer and I love it. Um, it's fun, but I have only done unhealthy foods in there. I need to find some recipes that are not, you know, your typical chicken tenders and all that. But yeah, it's fun. Thank you for asking. Um, <laughs> that was random. Sorry, I saw that, that comment fly by. I had to answer. The All-Star Tutorial Bundle, you get this for free with a $50 purchase, um, a Stampin' Up! online purchase um, from me, and I will email, email them out about once a week. If you think that I missed you and you didn't get yours, please reach out to me and let me know, because um, that does happen. There are some email monsters out there that like to eat uh, emails, especially when I send them in big bunches. Uh, for some reason, they get flagged. But this has 12 tutorials in it, um, de uh, designed by 12 different demonstrators around the world. It's a really fun little perk for ordering from me, and it's free. It's also free to my team. They always get it, my downline. And if you're a demo or you have a demo, and, but you still want it, it's in my PDF store. Okay, PDF store is at the top of my blog, pinkbuckaroo.com. There's a tab at the top that says PDF store and you can click on there and there are hundreds of PDFs in there. Um, this is my project this month, this fun little box. Um, it's, it's cute. It reminds me of, I don't know, I keep looking at it and I keep thinking of like a bread box, which I'm not sure how I even know what a bread box is and if that is really what it is. But anyway, that's what's in, that's my tutorial this month in there. Okay, I'm gonna flip it around because I wanna show you guys some things. Let's see, let me move. I have to tell you guys that, hey Patty, um, that this week um, my neighbors right next door have gotten a new roof. Uh, last April, we had a really bad hail storm here in Holotus and all the houses have been getting new roofs. And um, ours, we did ours way back like in May or June or something like that. But my next door neighbors were getting a new roof to this week and it has taken forever. If you have ever experienced getting a new roof, my friend Kimberly had warned me it's a nightmare and she was right. Um, and the house next door, literally, we live on a cul-de-sac, so they are like right next door. Um, it has been very loud and my poor dogs have been 
beside themselves. Today, Charlie was just a mess. But just as I was setting up, they drove away and they're done. So yay. But this morning's videos, you might, if you go back to watch the clean recordings, you're going to hear a lot of hammering in the background. <laughs> oh, well, it is what it is. Okay, here's today's projects. I'm going to talk to you the, about those in just a second, but I want to do a couple of these things. Today's the very last day for this class, the Gather Together Class to Go, six projects. It's three cards, three 3D projects. I mean, it includes uh, the the ribbon that is on back order, but it will be coming ASAP. Um, I have already ordered all of them, hopefully, <laughs> fingers crossed. Um, but I'm going to start working on this um, this weekend and Monday and Tuesday. So if you would like this class, make sure that you click the link in today's PDF or on my blog or message me or whatever. Let's see, where is it on the PDF? Second page right here. Today is the last day. I will close it at midnight, okay? Um, I want to uh, start working on these pretty quickly. So please, 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 if you want this class, make sure you sign up by the end of today. Um, I don't even, where's my little post-it note? I don't know. It's, I was taking things out, measuring, cutting paper earlier today. So anyways, deadline today. Ships out hopefully by the end of next week. And you can get it with the bundle, stamps and dies. You can get it without the stamps and dies. You can get PDF only in my PDF store. Or if you're my team, you can just get the make and takes by themselves. Um, this, you have to message me and say, hey, send me the registration link. Or it's always in my emails, guys. I can send those registrations out um, in my email. So if you are not on my email list, make sure you sign up because those emails I send out every week have the direct link to register. You don't have to email me and say, please send me the link because it's already in the email. Um, we're not allowed to list them on our blogs or Facebook or anything. So if you want it, shoot me an email um, and I will send that to you. But we've got to get it done today. Okay, the other class that I have for this month is the hashtag Elfie class. This is a stamp a stack with these adorable little elves. Um, 10 cards, and I have my cheat sheet here. Let's see, 10 cards and 10 envelopes. There's also a 30 minute blends tutorial video with this class, as well as the PDF um, showing you how to make each one, measurements, all that in case you want to um, recreate it. Of course, you're gonna get a bunch of DSP, um, a bolt of ribbon, and you can add on the blends for uh, cost. I'm not gonna charge the tax and shipping that's usually added to those. So if you add on blends to this class, you're going to get a little bit of a discount on that and they will ship with your class okay all right that one same deal um link right here or email me say please send me the link and that is it um i want to tell you guys about something that's coming up that i am really really excited about this is the christmas time is here suite and um should i give you a sneak peek let me see i have this is coming out in November, and it's just for November, and one of the perks uh, for being a demonstrator is that you get to order this stuff early, and so I did. Okay, if you're in my stamp club and you don't want to see next month's page or card, look away, okay? That was fair warning. Ready? Five, four, three, two, one. Here it is. So this is what it looks like in real life. Look how beautiful. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. Here's the card. Um, this is coming in November. It will be available November 1st for everyone. And that November 1st is a Friday. So you better believe that we're going to be looking and playing with all of this on November 1st, Facebook Friday. Now, if you would like to buy a starter kit um, today or anytime in October, you can actually add any of this to your starter kit. Here's a card also. This one I cased from Stampin' Up! Um, it is beautiful. You can add it to your starter kit and um, or you can wait until November to get it. But there is paper. There is um, the stamp set, of course, um, the dies, the little gold glitter enamel dots and the gold ribbon. I love, love, love those. And there's this really adorable little bracelet. So we will spend some time November 1st talking about that. I haven't talked much about it just because, you know, we couldn't get it yet, but it's coming, it's coming, coming. Can you guys believe? Let's see, we only have, like two weeks from today is November 1st. What in the world? Time is going by super fast. The other thing on here that's coming is our uh, trimmer, paper trimmer, and I don't have an official date for you yet, but it's coming soon. Demonstrators can buy theirs now. We'll use it today, you'll see it. Um, this is also something you can add to your starter kit. Um, 
if you want to buy the starter kit, you can get that whole suite and you could get that. I don't know how much all of that is, but up to $125 of that new stuff. If you would like to join my team and get, um, you know, um, a discount and get my PDFs for free and all of that. Okay. My table is clear. Here we go. Today is Facebook Friday. If you've never joined me for Facebook Friday, I pick a product usually. And this, we can't see it, right? Um, I pick a product and then we make like three projects with it. And this week I chose the Boo To You stamp set. How cute, right? Um, and the other part of Facebook Friday. So I'm gonna show you how to make all three of these. If you would like me to send you the materials to make all three of them in the mail for free, then you can put in an order. And you can order anything you want. You don't have to order what I'm showing you, if you already have it especially. But any $35 order or more that uses this host code by Monday at midnight, we'll, I will send these to you for free next week. Tuesday, I cut all of them and I mail them all on Wednesday. So it will get to you in plenty of time to make before Halloween. Um, this is what it looks like. These are some of the, the ones from the past. This is last week's with that little cute little, what did we decide? Is he a chicken or a rooster? I don't know. But everything is there for you other than, you know, the stamps. Um, you'll need the stamp set, whatever stamp set I'm showing you. I can't send you stamped images. I always make a little thank you tag, a little gift tag to go in there. Um, here's that one. So if you would like these free Halloween make and takes, make sure you get your order in by Monday at midnight. And you guys, if your order is over $150, don't use the host code because you get what we used to call host rewards, host benefits, now we call them stampin' rewards, but it's basically free stuff. Um, a workshop, um, you know, if you host a workshop, you get free stuff because you hosted the workshop. Well, that threshold is $150, um, but you don't actually have to host a workshop to get free stuff. You just have to have an order that's over $150, and then it starts kicking in. You know, I'm gonna show you guys, because I never talk about that. In your catalog, on the very back, no, very front, no, where is it? Oh, good grief, Erica, right here, second to last page, just for hosts, that's what it says, right? But guess what? It's not just for hosts. It's for anybody who spends over $150. Um, I'm echoing real bad. Ooh, does anybody else hear an echo? Tell me. I have my microphone on, maybe I need to turn it off. You guys tell me if, let me scroll down. Missy is the only one hearing an echo. Um, right here, so $150, and if you reach that threshold, then you start earning 10% of what you've you've spent. So if you spend $150, you get 10%, which is $15, in free stuff. Anything you want, but you also then get access to the host stamp sets, no echo. Okay, so Missy, right, it was Missy? Um, now I'm not. Okay, well, you know what? Sometimes if you just like close it and come back, like completely close Facebook and come back, that'll that'll solve it. Anyways, $150, then you be, basically you become a host um, and you get the stamp rewards when you get to $300, it bumps up to 12%, 450%, 14% and so on. And so these host sets, as well as the ones in the annual catalog, um, you can buy those with your stamp and rewards or anything else in the catalog. Um, so if you don't have, you know, if you have some friends who want to put in orders together, sometimes that's a really good idea too, um, to put them all in together and then split up the free host rewards. Okay, so here are today's projects. Um, I love this stamp set. We made something with it. Remember we made the box? Let me pull that out. I actually see it right here. We made this box, right? When we did the catalog kickoff, um, Facebook Live back in early September, and there's this guy, and I said, this stamp set will probably have its own Facebook Friday, and here we are. We're gonna do it. So let's get started with this one first. Um, I have pulled in some other stamp sets as well, you'll see in a minute, but I wanna tell you about what's in this box. Let me open it and show you, because this is a special request. I've actually had a about three or four people asking about a box for the Little Debbie Brownie Bats. They look like this, here they are. 
And that's what we're doing today. So you're welcome to those of you who asked. I don't even remember now. Um, I know Mike asked. We uh, Mike, we talked about it. I can't remember. There's been a few of you. Um, and if you'll notice, this little guy, he has a bat in his hand. <laughs> <laughs> so that's fun. Okay, let's get started. I'm going to move all this over here. I do want to mention I am using the sentiment from Itty Bitty Greetings. Um, I needed something small and skinny for him to stand on. So I, if you haven't gotten this set, it's a great one. See, it's two cases and it's a sentiment for every occasion and they're itty bitty, right? They're small. They're, they're going to, um, you know, sometimes you just need something small. Um, and so they're perfect and trick or treat is what we're using. And then of course I'm bringing back to every season so we could add in some of those bats for our brownie bat. Okay. Let's see, I need to move my iPad over because I'm not seeing what you guys are saying. We're gonna start by stamping this, and I believe he is a werewolf. And Anne-Marie and I had a, a giggle about him. Um, he looks really excited. <laughs> oh, that didn't stamp well, let's do that again. Hmm, something maybe, I may need to re-ink my pad. Let's try that again. That's why cardstock has two sides, much better. Okay, so we've used Memento Black um, because we are using our Stampin' Blends. When you use your Stampin' Blends, they are alcohol markers, and you want to um, use a water-based ink, okay? Um, if you mixed alcohol markers with alcohol ink, things are not going to go well. And if you used a water-based um like an aqua painter with a water-based ink, then things are not gonna go well either. They're gonna smear, they're gonna bleed, they're gonna react to each other not very well. So that's why you wanna use the opposite. Alcohol markers, water-based ink. Now I have taken um, light granny apple green, given that little coat a, f a full coating of color. And now I'm gonna come back with some of this dark. I added some just on his left side and I'm gonna go right here, wherever there would be a shadow. So there's a shadow by his little collar there and by his little furry mane and down here around like that and then I'm going to go back with that light green and I'm going to blend it all together. Um, I am using the bullet tip. I prefer to use that bullet tip. It's really a matter of preference, whatever you like. Play around with them, see what you like. All right, now I chose fun, bright, you know, silly colors really for him because I wanted this to just be not your your typical Halloween colors. And he is silly and he doesn't look scary at all. So I totally think that he would be wearing a granny apple green jacket with lovely lipstick pants, right? Totally believable. I mean, he's a werewolf who's like smiling and giving us jazz hands, right, Emery? <laughs> All right, so that was Granny Apple Green. Now let's take Highland Heather, and we're using Gorgeous Grape cardstock, but there's no Gorgeous Grape stamp and blend markers. So Highland Heather Dark is a great substitute. Looks very, very similar. Thanks for sharing, you guys. When you're when you share the video, you are qualified for the drawing next week. All right, let's see now. I'm gonna take my light smoky slate. I'm gonna color in his feet. Oh, and his hairy chest. I think that's, woo. he's got a little hairy chest there showing some, some skin. <laughs> oh, I better keep it clean. I could say some funny things about this guy. I don't know, he is a little bit funny. Now I'm gonna just go all over his his face, being very careful not to get his eyes. We want to leave his eyes white. And the um, bottom of his nose, we're going to color that in lipstick also. So leave that, go around his teeth. Those need to be white. All the way around. These, um, You'll find that these are not simple, quick coloring projects. This this is a more involved, you know, if I had to make a bunch of these, like 50, I probably would choose a different stamp set because this, unless you just love to just sit around and color for a long time. Um, not that it's difficult, but it does take some time. 
Um, but if you're going to make just a little handful of these, then it's no problem. Uh, the third project we do today is a little more simplified um, with a coloring. So it kind of gives you an option to be a little more simple with a coloring. Now I've taken my dark smoky slate and colored in his wild mane, put a little bit of dark in his ear and added some shadow there where his arms go into his jacket and his feet are coming out of his pants. We're going to blend that in. Now the last thing we need to do is give him a pink nose because he's not scary. And there we have it. Okay, now one thing I will tell you about, whoops, where are my tiny scissors? I've been doing all kinds of things today. Who knows where all my stuff is? Um, one thing I'll tell you about the stamp set is, <laughs> have I been boozy crafting today, Carla? I don't know, why would, did I say something? Oh yeah, <laughs> um, no, not too highly inappropriate. He just, okay, well, I will tell you. There's this cartoon and I don't even know what it is, but my husband always would laugh. It's Johnny something, but he has curly blonde chest hairs. Now that I'm saying it out loud, I can't even remember what it was, but that's what I always think about. My husband always laughs and says, you know, whatever that guy says on the cartoon, something about curly blonde chest hairs. Anybody know what I'm talking about? I have no idea. My husband is a quote machine. He can quote you every movie, cartoon ever made. And I'm just like, what? <laughs> I can't remember anything. But yeah, he's a little, this guy's wild. Anne Marie said somebody she heard said he was giving jazz hands. So we giggled. We thought that was really funny. And he, maybe he's been boozing it up before Halloween. And he's like, hey guys, you know, like he doesn't look too scary. <laughs> I don't know. Okay. Back to the task at hand. Here's something that you'll notice. The artist that drew this was real, um, oh, I don't know the term, but you know, like sketchy, kind of like make, there's not a lot of straight lines here. There's a lot of fuzz there. And if you're real good, you could totally cut around those hair, hairs, but I'm just gonna cut them off. <laughs> Cause I'm lazy and I don't wanna do that. So we're just gonna cut it off. Look, he still looks cute. Oh, I think so. Anyways, use your smallest pair of scissors. I tell you guys, every time we fussy cut, add these scissors on. I need to add this to the, our supply list because um, this is stamping up. These are stamping up scissors, 10 bucks. And uh, I need to be reading y'all's comments. They're going by really fast. He totally does look like he should be singing show tunes. Oh my gosh, yes. Anne Marie, that's funny. Um, anyway, these are called paper snips, also known as scissors. <laughs> they're just called paper snips um, in the Stampin' Up! catalog. And they're perfect for fussy cutting. You just go around um, on the outside, leaving just a tiny bit of white. Although today, I don't know what's wrong with me. I'm cutting really close to that black line. Ta-da! Okay, there he is. <laughs> okay, let's set our little guy aside and let's make the box. I did make a clean recording. What did I do with my simply school? Here it is. I did make a clean recording of this one and the second project this morning during all the hammering next door. Um, so later on, if you wanna come back and find this, um, even in years, you know, like next year or whatever, if you find these bat brownies um, and you wanna make a box that size, you'll be able to find it on YouTube by itself, okay? Um, this PDF right here, of course, has all the things that I used. I couldn't fit the measurements down here this week, you guys, so they're over here, okay? Um, I put a little line there, hopefully you'll see. This is a six and a half by six inch piece of gorgeous grape, and we're gonna score the long side, the six and a half inch side at one, at three, four, and six. And then turn it on the short side, and score it at one and five. I have no idea why that font is so small there. I cannot even read it. Um, one thing I did fail to mention is that those bat brownies are Little Debbie, and you guys always email me, where did you find the Little Debbie snacks? Well, here in San Antonio, we find Little Debbie everywhere. Target, Walmart, HEB, Walgreens, wherever but there is a Little Debbie Snack Finder that you can go online. I have linked it there on today's post. Click it, enter your zip code, 
scroll down to the bat brownies and it'll tell you what stores in your area have the bat brownies okay okay now um we're gonna do some trimming here, okay? So here, you can see we've got a one inch section, a two inch section, a one inch section, a two inch section, and then a half inch section. This is the little lip that will go down into the box, the half inch section, okay? So you wanna cut off those rectangles on either end, like this. And then um, along the long side, cut in, trim these um, square tabs, and then also cut them at an angle, just the square tabs, okay? That will help your box go together a little bit better. All right, now over here, same thing. One, two, and three, and then cut those corners. Yeah, if you guys have an air fryer recipe that is not just buying the fried food that's frozen and <laughs> air frying it, send it to me. I told you guys I got an air fryer for my birthday and we have been using it and I love it. My daughter um, comes home, she's a senior, no, she's not a senior, she's a junior and she has off-campus lunch. Um, and so she has been coming home and using the air fryer to fry like, or cook basically the frozen chicken nuggets and tenders. So she likes it a lot too. All right, we need to do something down here. This tab, remember the long skinny tab, we're gonna cut off those corners like that. Then these two tabs on this edge, on this end, we're gonna cut them in half. They're gonna tuck down into our box. And then you wanna cut the corners off of those two. That just kind of creates, um, a smooth a smooth edge so that there's not a, a weird gap there um, when you fold in your box all right all right so now let's get adhesive remember I'm still using all my fast fuse but if you don't have any more left use your tear and tape um, or your Tombow liquid Tombow liquid look, works really well um, I used it on the next box and then just take little clothespins and hold those tabs um, closed while it dries and then it's really, really good. Okay, so I've put adhesive on the outside of those square tabs and I'm folding up that side, making it square, looking at it. Looks like I have a little spider web in there, it's just adhesive. And there you have. Now you're gonna fold these in like this and they go in. I can see my paper. I don't know if you guys can see that, but I have a really rough edge on my cardstock there. I'm gonna have to take care of that later. I don't know how that happened. All right, brownie inside your bat brownie and fold it closed. Now, I did this in the clean recording too. I forgot to stamp the little bat. So let's open it up and add a couple of these little bats from two every season. Sam and Anne Marie, I don't like fish. I'm like a child. I don't like fish. I don't like meat on the bone. I'm very, very weird that way, but that does sound interesting. Okay, so three little gorgeous great, hmm, that's a tongue twister, gorgeous great bats um, right there in the corner like that, okay? All right, so we've got that. We've got our little werewolf. I have already punched a two inch mango melody, um, circle and I had a stamping sponge here and I don't see it. Where did it go? If it was a snake, it would have bit me. Let me see. Did I put it in that other? Hmm. It's probably looking right at me. My stamping sponge. No. we. Oh, it's on the floor. That was the next place I was going to look. All right. Just a stamping sponge. I'm going to ink the edges. I um, This is just a stampin' sponge that I've cut into wedges. I think you can get about eight wedges out of one sponge. And then you punch the cardstock of the color that you've used. Um, this is the tabs, tabs for everything, is that what it's called? It's a punch in our catalog. And you just staple it on and then you know what color you've used. Okay, so that's our moon because he would be howling at the moon, wouldn't he? Or dancing or giving his his Broadway debut under the full moon. <laughs> okay, all right, let's put on our moon, kind of 
coming off a little bit. Oh, we covered up too much of that bat. Let's do that. Um, then we've got a piece of gorgeous, no, a basic gray, not gorgeous gray, basic gray DSP. It is one by two and three fourths. And I am going to just cut the edges at an angle. And we will put this down here. Now, did I throw my white piece away already? Wow, it was really efficient. Let's get that back out. And we're gonna stamp the sentiment in gorgeous grape. Gorgeous grape. I feel like my words are coming out weird today. You would think I'd be day drinking, Carla. I think you like, I think you um jinxed me. Now I'm like, was I drinking? <laughs> I wasn't, I'm just joking. I had lunch with my parents, it was very nice. And I had been working my booty off today. We did some shopping for my mom's house yesterday. Did not get a lot of work done yesterday. So today I've been really working. Okay, there we go, trick or treat. Let's add our dancing werewolf. Ooh, Fran, there's an air fryer group page. Mm, I'm gonna have to look for that. Um, put our little werewolf there. And now, because it's a bat brownie, we've got to punch some bats. All right, so this is the punch that matches that little gorgeous grape brownie. What is, see, my words are messed up today. Talking is hard, words are hard. Gorgeous grape bat right there. And I'm gonna just take a glue dot for each of these little bats. You know, you can use the punch with the stamped image like we did a couple weeks ago, right? We uh, made several projects with the fun to every season bundle. But today we're just gonna use the silhouette here and I put one on his hand because he's like, some. we gotta do something with those hands, right? He's holding <laughs> his hand out and the little bat comes and lands on his hand. And there you have it. A bat brownie box with a werewolf. So fun, so cute. And if you don't like the werewolf, well, you have the brownie box size, you can decorate it in any way that you'd like. All right, let's pack this stuff up and see the next project. The next project is one my friend Anne Marie has helped me with as well. Um, last week I mentioned when we were using the, um, when we were using the, what are they called? Monster Bash enamel dots. I got an idea for this project because, let's see, let me see if I can pull it out. I always put the things I need first on the bottom. That's not very smart. Here it is. I had made this box and I texted it to Anne Marie because something was missing. And she suggested the bow. And then when, when we did the, the Monster Bash enamel dots last week and I said, I've got all these tombstone stickers left, what can I do? And then I thought, hey, that's where it's gonna go. He looks like he's kicking over the tombstone, right? So funny. Who knows how these ideas pop in our head? So weird. Okay, now we've got something fun inside of this box too. And what's weird with this one is I couldn't really find it on Amazon or anywhere. They are the Russell Stover's Coconut Nest. Um, and Russell Stover's, I guess, makes these all the time, but this is the Halloween version because they put the little monster face on it. Um, and well, it's got Halloween stuff behind it, but when I was looking online, these come in non-Halloween, um, you know, the rest of the year. But I really couldn't find these um, on Amazon, but I did find the other candies that it was with at our grocery store. It was kind of over on an end cap by itself. And there were these other cute little pumpkin marshmallow treats. So they are the same size. So if you couldn't find these, you could use those too. And the box holds two of them. Now, coconut treats may not be a favorite for kids. So maybe this is like a grown up, you know, for the people at your office or whatever, or just put in whatever candy you want. It doesn't have to be those. Any little candies, you could just fill it up with candies. Okay, so let's make that. Now, notice this guy, he's holding the sign. So when we stamp him, we're gonna do something a little bit different with him. Um, we don't really need to color in um, the middle of him because we're gonna cover it up. But this is some um, fussy cutting some serious fussy cutting, I will tell you, because we're gonna cut his arms off. 
Yikes, I know, it sounds terrible, doesn't it? We're gonna cut his arms off. Okay, <laughs> again with the weird non-Halloween colors, I was really trying to just do something different. So I've got Bermuda Bay, and I'm gonna do Bermuda Bay light all over him. He's got those fuzzy hairs on him too. Not to worry, not a problem. We'll just cut around them or cut them off or whatever. <laughs> whatever. All right, coloring in light Bermuda Bay. I'm gonna switch over to that bullet tip because now I've got this smaller space and I don't wanna get out of the lines too badly. Now I'm not gonna worry about too much here around his mouth because we're gonna color, cover that up with that sign that he's holding. Let's see, he's, a, he's probably my favorite of the three. He doesn't look like he's singing show tunes. He looks like he lives under your bed, <laughs> right? I don't know. Okay, now with the dark, let's put some dark where you see those little, um, wherever the artist has drawn the little tick marks, that's kind of a indication to add some shading there. Um, you know, the darker markers like Bermuda Bay are so dark to begin with that a lot of times you uh, don't need too much to add too much, but you can use your color lifter to take some away, which is a good way to do it, but we're just gonna leave them like that. Okay, now, Mango, which is like my favorite color right now, Mango Melody. We're gonna color in the entire horn in light mango. Okay, and then with the dark, we're going to just color those spots in. Okay, cute. Mango and Bermuda look good together. They're opposite colors. All right, so let's cut, and another tip. Oh, I forgot his funky toenails. A monster can't leave the house without his toenails colored, goodness. We'll just make him match his horns. Okay, again, use whatever colors you want. There's no right or wrong here. All right, I'm gonna cut off all the excess cardstock there. That's gonna help me get into the spaces a little bit better. And we really need his hands to be cut really well or his paws or I don't know what does a monster have does he have claws or maybe I don't, I don't know they don't look like claws they look like maybe who knows I don't know okay funky hair I'm just going to cut around it I'm not going to get crazy and try to cut each individual hair cut around his horns drop some of that cardstock off while you go around so that it's not dangling there getting in your way And there we go. My girls haven't fully decided on their Halloween costumes. I think I finally got the little one to commit to, she's gonna be a stick man. If you haven't seen a stick man costume, you need to look it up on YouTube. Basically, she's gonna wear an all black, like um, a black hoodie and black pants, and then you get glow sticks and we actually have bought a rope glow stick that has a battery attached to it. And you pin them on like a, like, a, like a stick figure. And then it is hilarious as they're walking down the street because in the dark, all you can see is the stick man. Um, and it's really funny. Look it up on YouTube. It's it's funny. I think last year we saw, I think that was the first time we saw it in our neighborhood and it like blew my mind. It sounds really dumb, but it looks really neat. And then we saw it again at my daughter's that gala we went to. They had a performance that people were dancing and it was really neat. So I think that's what she's gonna be. Okay, now let's snip off his arms. Sorry, guy. Let's cut them off and don't lose them. You know what, this one I don't like. I've left a little bit too much white. So I'm gonna trim it down like that. Look at him, poor guy. Now, I have cut a tiny piece of DSP. This, it kind of blends in with my wood table. This DSP is from the uh, Gather Together or Come Together designer series paper, and it's the wood grain. 
and I wanted it to look like a sign. And then we're gonna just trim it down on one of the little boards like that. Well, did I do it? Well, it kinda looks a little crooked, but we're going with it. You can use your trimmer if you want. Now, we're gonna glue his hands on there like he's holding the sign. So you're gonna need your fine tip glue. I know, poor monster. Oh, little water bottles that have monsters on them. Oh, Michelle, I haven't seen that. That would be cute, because they always need water on Halloween. They're always so thirsty. All right, a little dot of your fine tip glue. And I'm gonna put the arms off a little bit hanging off the edge, because we're gonna cut them in a minute when it's dry so that it's even. Let me hold that up so you guys can see. All right, see that? All right, we're gonna let that dry while we make the box. Now, this box is a like a gift box with a lid and a bottom, but first we must put the pen back into, oh my gosh, can't even see, back into our fine tip glue. There we go. All right, so this is um this box is a, like a gift box with the top comes off, and it was made specifically for those two little coconut nest candies, those Russell Stover candies, but again, it's the right size for just Halloween candy. You can fill it with whatever you'd like. All right, now remember, measurements are right here. You might have to get out your magnifying glass for these. <laughs> I don't know, I need to change that font. Last week it was the same thing. Okay, piece of Mango Melody that is five and a half by six and a fourth. We're gonna score all four sides at one and a half. So turn, 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 every time one and a half. Now the the lid is basic black and it is, where are my measurements? Oh, what, what am I looking at? Yeah, no, I was looking at the wrong thing. Four and three fourths by four. <laughs> four and three fourths by four. And we're gonna score all four sides at three fourths of an inch, but we want the lid to be a little bit, just a hair bigger than the bottom so it'll come off easier. So I have a stack of post-it notes, four or five post-it notes, and you put it on the left side of your Simply Scored, and it leaves just a hair's width right there um, between your uh, edge and your score line. So that's gonna make the lid be just a little bit bigger than the box. Whoa, stay straight. Not too much bigger. Um, because if you go up one tick line, it actually is too much. So this way you've got just a skinny little sliver of extra space there. All right, bone folder, Let's fold all of these. Oh, Carol, you're traveling home from the Smoky Mountains. Lovely. All right, now we're gonna do the bottom. And the, the bottom and the, the lid, we're gonna do exactly the same. They're gonna go together exactly the same way. So the first thing I'm gonna do is cut off the corners, okay? So from the bottom score line to that score line, just cut a diagonal line. I bet the weather is nice in the Smoky Mountains. And then I'm gonna cut right there on the long side, both long sides, cut up your score line. You could do the short side too, but just make sure you do, if you do, if you cut this way, make sure you do the opposite side. All right, now place your adhesive near the fold line, near the score line on the triangles, and fold up and in. Okay, so we're just gonna Fold those in easy peasy like that. All right, now there's your bottom. Let's do the top again, corner to corner. That one was kind of weird. You're working on Christmas projects for a craft fair. Well, Joanne, today is the last of Halloween. I think next week we're gonna do the wreath sets. You know, there's two wreath sets in the new holiday catalog that have a, one die set that goes with both. So I think we're gonna do that next week. And by the way, 
I know that we have been doing 3D projects for weeks and my card makers out there are like, enough already, we need some cards. So next week, I believe we're gonna do all cards. And then it's gonna be all Christmas for the rest of the time, all right? I'm not telling you what I'm doing, but you guys saw me do it a minute ago. Fold these in, the corners in to the sides. Okay, so this is it for Halloween. Might do a little more fall. Maybe, maybe, maybe Thanksgiving. Let's see. And then it'll be all Christmas. <gasps> Ta-da! It fits perfectly like a glove. Okay, so I, I really wanted to make sure that you guys out there, my card makers, don't give up on me. We're going to do cards next week, I promise. All right. Now, for the top of our box, you can see these diagonal lines. This is a stamp set that goes with a curvy keepsake box. It's called Tiny Keepsakes. Okay, so we're going to do these diagonal lines in basic black on just Whisper White. Hey, Nathan, how are you? I'm gonna stamp this and then we're gonna get that new trimmer out and we're gonna trim it down. And I thought that I had left a pretty substantial white border around it, but I, so I did that in my second video or my first video today, but you can see I actually did not. So it just depends on which way you like it. You can leave the border around or you can just go right on the edge. All right, so here's our new trimmer. This is the new Stampin' Trimmer. It is coming very soon. I do not have an official date for you, um, but it is coming very soon. It is only going to be $25, which is a great price point, and it's a great little trimmer. It has um, the scoring tool. It has a much bigger blade on it. In fact, when I was showing it to either you guys or my team, I totally sliced my finger with it and it is just now healing. So the blade is really good. And the scoring tool on it is also completely different. It's It makes a deeper score line, it makes a better score line. Um, but anyway, it's really nice. It has this fold out arm that goes all the way to 17 inches. Um, what else did I need to tell you about it? I don't know, it's great. I think you guys are gonna like it. I think it would make a great Christmas gift. So if you are making your Christmas list, you're gonna wanna add it to there. I do believe, fingers crossed, that you will have access to it before Christmas. You'll be able to order it. Right now you can add it to a starter kit, but you can't order it yet. Okay, so we've put that there. Let's come back to our little monster under the bed. Now I'm gonna come over here and trim his arms once again so that they are even with the side of that sign, okay? And then we're gonna grab some dimensionals. I got this idea from, once again, Melody Hyde. She's a lead concept artist at Stampin' Up. She posted some cute things on Instagram with this set that were not Halloween. And one of the things, one of her monsters, she had posted with his eyes peeking up with the little hands over, so I loved that and I um, had to use that idea. I think, I can't remember, maybe it was a Valentine's. She's so good about coming up with non-traditional ideas. Okay, so we're gonna put him there, um, and with, that was with a dimensional, and then let's get a tombstone. Let's get this one. He's kicking over the tombstone. He's a grouchy monster. And then um, we'll use, let's see, your, our take your pick tool. The coffin treat boxes, Lisa, you like them? They're great, aren't they? Um, they are just so easy to put together. You cut two of your fingers with a new trimmer, Kathy. It is so sharp, right? Yeah, I wasn't expecting it because the other one wasn't like that. And I was kind of taking my finger and just kind of like, oh, and here's the blade and whoop. I've had, what is my deal lately? I have cut my fingers a lot lately. Okay, a couple of little dots and the um, um, Crush Curry, no, I always call it Crush Curry, Mango Melody Seam Binding. It um, matches his horns. Remember, we've got the Stampin' Up! colors come in accessories, so we can match everything perfectly. There's usually a ribbon with one of the colors that you're using. There's markers, 
paper, of course. I dropped my good scissors down here. Let me get them. Um, but yeah, that paper trimmer is awesome. You know, many of you loved the old paper trimmer, and it was. We, we will not speak of the sadness that some of us <laughs> felt. Not me. I wasn't a big fan because I've told you guys I like a guillotine paper cutter. But some of you really were sad. But I think that if you're out of blades with your old one, I think this will be a nice uh, switch over for you. Um, it's very, very similar. It carries over all the great things of the old trimmer. Um, but it has improvements. And we're done <laughs> while I'm talking. What do you guys think? Isn't he adorable? And you know, it does look like I took my color lifter right there and lifted some of that color. Can you see that? Let me grab that. What time is it? Oh, 10 minutes. Let's see. If you take your color lifter and you add it, it will add some lighter color there on the top. Um, when, you're, when your Stampin' Blends are super dark, it's sometimes hard to shade and have lighter spots because it starts out so dark so that's when the color lifter really comes in handy all right you guys i am so glad you like that project we're not done we have one more okay so let me move this over here make some room for the last one and i told you those two actually i usually try to keep my videos to 10 minutes and both of those took 15 minutes to film um, those were longer projects because of the coloring. But this one, we're going to simplify the coloring. Look at him. The zombie, right? The walking dead. Look at him. He's so funny. And look what's in here. These are gummy eyeballs. Of course, I found these at Michael's of all places in the checkout line. They're just gummy eyeballs. And four of them fit in our clear envelopes. I have seen other eyeballs in places and I linked on our blog, my blog post today on Amazon where you can get some of these. Um, and this is a clear envelope that you may not have ever seen in our catalog. It Did I do three or four? Yeah, I did four, squeezed four in there. Um, clear env envelopes are so great because they cover up your card. Um, you can even mail things in these clear envelopes. Um, I've done it many times. And how fun is it to get a package in the mail, a card in the mail that it has a clear envelope? Um, so anyways, these are in our catalog if you're interested. And they, these are um, already wrapped in cello, so I wasn't worried about food safety or anything. Um, but I'm just going to take that off and fold that in half like that, okay? So this project would be great if you need to make a bunch of something, right? And for craft fairs too, this is a great little sell at a craft fair. Okay, so we've bagged those up and now we're gonna just make a tag topper or a bag topper. This is a piece of crumb cake. Let me look at my notes so I tell you the right size. Four and a half by five and I scored it at two and a half on the five inch side, okay? All right, now let's get our little zombie. And this time, we're going to color him with um, watercolor markers, um, watercolor pencils, not markers, watercolor pencils. So you'll notice I have changed over to stays on and stays on is waterproof, basically. It's not going to run or bleed when you are using water. So it's a really good ink for your blender pen, your aqua painter, anytime you're going to use a little bit of water coloring. Okay, so here he is, and I'm going to keep it simple, okay? I'm going to take my pumpkin pie watercolor pencil. I hope I put this on the supply list. I tied that supply list up many days ago, and I can't remember now. Um, but real quick, we'll color him in. And if you like to use your Stampin' Blends, of course, you can do Stampin' Blends. Um, this is on crumb cake cardstock, which I feel like for some reason it's just easier and quicker. I'm not sure why I feel that way, but um, it does. It kind of it kind of just comes together quicker, I feel like. And we're not going to cut him out. He's going to stay on here. Now his little pants. What is this? Early espresso. Um, and his hair. And I don't think I just said what I just did. That is a blender pen. Not to be confused with a Stampin' Blend. This thing right here is a blender pen. Um, and you get two of them. See how it's got that orange color in it? You just 
run it on your scratch paper until it runs clean. There's a um, solvent in there, some kind of liquid that will blend those colors really well together. Just makes it nice and smooth. And then you can switch colors easily. It's You have much better control with this than you do an aqua painter because there's no water coming out. It's really just kind of like a, a clear marker. Okay, and then you can just run it clean and use it on the next color. Now I'm gonna take the white and I'm gonna color his face in white. He's a zombie, so he's got weird skin. All right, so we're gonna color that all in, his hands, his feet, his other hand, and then I'm gonna make sure that my blender pen is nice and clean and I'm just gonna smooth all that out. I left his eyes just crumb cake because we're gonna put on those googly eyes and it's not gonna cover the whole space, but it looks, I don't know, it gives a little bit of, um, um, again, my words are hard today. What's wrong with me? It gives a little, I can't think of the word. I don't know. Margarita time, guys. <laughs> okay. Um, we're going to take, this is Stampin' Write marker. Basic Black is one of the only Stampin' Write markers you can buy by itself, um, not in a package. So you can add this on. It's $3. And I'm just going to put like a little zombie line. <laughs> you can just hear him right walking. Ugh. Those monsters make ugly noises, those zombies. Okay, now this is a bag topper. So all you do is you fold it over the top of your bag and then, uh oh, did it take my stapler out? It did, let me grab it. And then you just staple it on your bag. Uh oh, UPS is here. Okay, good, he's driving by. Poor Charlie. Charlie's asleep, actually. He didn't even hear the UPS guy. I had to finally give Charlie his little puppy Xanax today. He just was so scared of the, the roofers next door and he was shaking and so he's asleep. All right, let's do purple eyes this time. These are the Stampin' Up uh, little googly eyes that you will find in the holiday catalog and there's a mix, you know, there's yellow, green, white, purple. And we'll once again, do I want to, no, I think I'm going to do a glue dot. They're big enough for a glue dot. Creep dimension. Michelle, that was the word that I, I was thinking, but that's not the word I was looking for. Discrepancy, the difference between the two colors. I don't even know what I was saying now. I can't even remember. Depth, something with a D. I don't know. Okay, look at him. <laughs> oh, he is creepy. Okay, now let's get the, um, the sentiment. It does say just a little creepy. Pumpkin pie. And we're gonna stamp that right there on a tiny little piece of white, one by one and a fourth. And then I think, I don't think I'm gonna be able to do this. Nope, let's get those post-it notes that I was using. If you have a piece of paper that is too small to fit in your punch, put a post-it note on it, and then you can put it in, you can squeeze it in. All right, so we're just gonna punch the bottom of that off so it's a little flag. And a little bit of adhesive right there. <laughs> I just love it. And last but not least, how about some braided trim? Gummy eyeballs. That sounds like it would make me gag. But my girls, actually Ellie came in here and ate one already, my teenager. She liked it. But ooh, that's a little too close to the real thing gummy eyeballs and they're squishy and gross but the kids like it and there you go let's let's fix that I don't like the way that looks there we go so fun what do you guys think cute isn't he so cute I need to add a little more white to this guy's face but any of the eyeballs that you use will work and I think the kids will like it the kids will like it. This is probably more of a kid treat than an adult treat. What do you guys think? 
Not sure adults would like gummy eyeballs. Maybe, I don't know, maybe. All right, let's look at what we made. We've got that guy, our jazz hand werewolf. We've got the coconut nest box and the gummy eyeball treat. Now remember you guys, the PDF's over there on my blog. Make sure you get it, click it. You can print it, save it, whatever you want. Um, I will upload the recording of this here on my blog later, as well as the clean recordings of these two. I did not do a clean recording of this one because it's so simple. Um, but these two, there will be clean recordings there for you um, for later. So you guys can get that. Remember your order needs to be in by Monday at midnight, $35 minimum host code here. Unless your order is over $150, don't use the host code. You'll get stamp and rewards and I'll still send you all three for free. Um, and message or email me right now if you want to, um, the gather together class to go because, um, in just about an hour I'm leaving for the evening and I want to make sure that you guys get registered for that, um, if you um, want, it, want to order that class because it is deadline is today. If you type that in, that will also get you there, okay? Okay, I think we are done. You're welcome, Vicki. Uh, let me make sure I didn't miss anything. Yeah, the watercolor pencils and I switch up. Christine, I forget about them. And I it just kind of made it look a little more vintagey. I thought it was kind of fun, thank you. All right, thank you so much, you guys. It looks like I uh, I got everything. You guys have a great weekend. Let me know if you have questions next week. I will be in and out. I do need to work next week, but I'm also helping my parents move into their house. So be patient with me next week, please. But I do have Facebook Friday on the schedule next Friday. So I will see you guys then. You guys were wonderful today. Thanks so much. Bye.